Welcome to Drive Car of the Year for 2021. This is the small city car segment where we try to find out the best value for money car for you. We have the Kia Rio, we've got the Suzuki Swift, and of course the segment favorite Volkswagen Polo. First up in this video, we'll take a look at the cabins and we'll pull them apart to find out the best features inside the cabin of each vehicle. Then we'll hit the track for some more dynamic testing. And as I said, key for this segment and key for buyers in this segment is value. The judges have a lot to consider when it comes to comparing cars in this segment. It's easy to think of city or compact cars as a second car, but for many buyers on a budget, it's their only car. That means it needs to be a jack of all trades and needs to be competent at more than one thing. If you've only got one car, you've got less areas of compromise. City cars don't necessarily need to be capable of driving cross country from Sydney to Perth effortlessly, but they do need to be able to live safely on the highway if needed. They need to offer practical space and comfort, and they need to drive in a way that makes them feel as if they are a segment bigger. It's no easy task. Two quality offerings were on test, but couldn't even crack our top three this year, showing just how competitive this segment is. The Kia Picanto, it was one of the front runners in the category last year. We love the Kia. Unfortunately, it hasn't improved as much as the others in the segment this year. And the Toyota Yaris, we love this car too. Of course, it's a finalist. Unfortunately, though, it is one of the most expensive in the category. Therefore, there's better value for money in this segment this year. The Kia Rio starts from $19,090 for the 1.4S, while the range topping GT line starts from $24,490, offering a decent spread to suit your budget. Across the range, there's an 8 inch touchscreen and a 4.2 inch cluster for the driver. You also get wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Forward Crash Alert and City Speed AEB are also standard along with a four-star ANCAP safety rating, but Aussie Rios do miss out on some of the extra safety equipment offered overseas. Rio is covered by a seven-year unlimited kilometre warranty, with seven years of cap price servicing as well. Suzuki Swift is a perennial favourite in this class and starts from $18,990, moving up to $26,990 for the range-topping sport variant. Across the range, Suzuki recently added tech like auto up power windows, a digital speedometer and a better audio system as standard. There's also a 7 inch infotainment screen with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, while moving one step up from the base model adds blind spot assist, rear cross traffic alert, heated door mirrors and rear parking sensors. Swift is covered by a 5 year unlimited kilometre warranty and a 5 star ANCAP rating carries over from 2017. The Volkswagen Polo offers a potent blend of bang for your buck and starts from $19,290 for the Trendline model, while the style variant starts from $25,690. For those of you with deeper pockets, there is of course the Polo GTI, starting from $32,890. Volkswagen has offered a spread of models and options packages to suit most budgets in this segment. As such, Polo ups the ante on the standard equipment front as you step up through the model range of course, but all variants get an 8-inch touchscreen, a rear view camera, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, adjustable height headlights, AEB and a full suite of active safety. Polo also carries a 5-star ANCAP rating from 2018. The Kia Rio is a few years old now, but there's still a lot to like about the interior. It still holds up in 2021. And one of the highlights liked by the judges is the eight inch infotainment touchscreen. Certainly one of the best in this segment. In terms of quality, yeah, there's still a lot of hard plastics around, but there's also some interesting textures like this sort of carbon fiber weave effect on the dash. It is one of the bigger city cars in its class, but that also means you get some good legroom in the back, and you can't say that about every vehicle. We're going to start with the negatives on the Suzuki Swift's cabin, because it is very much a no-frills affair in here. Lots of hard plastics, basic presentation, quite a small infotainment screen here. But you know what, these seats, they are so comfortable, I could spend the whole day here at Car of the Year and not get out you also got quite good rear seat space for the city car class. 
There's lots to like about the Volkswagen Polo's interior. It's probably the most upmarket in the class. Very posh looking steering wheel, posh looking seats, very good interior quality as well. Relative for the class, there's obviously a lot of hard plastic still. This is a city car, but soft upper dash here. That's very rare for the class and a very slick looking infotainment display. It's hard to pick faults actually in the Polo's interior. If you were to nitpick, you would say there's no centre rear armrest or vents for the backseat passengers. The Kia Rio is surprisingly agile on the dynamic test loop. The judges noted that it's well connected and benefits from the Australian suspension tune. Balance is good and the Rio feels sure-footed on wet or dry surfaces. The Swift was always the hot hatch choice for buyers on a budget and while it's not as focused and light as it might have once been, the judges liked its overall balance and willingness to change direction. Polo remains the standard setter in terms of dynamic ability in this segment. Sharp, responsive steering, balance and poise, and a chassis tune that the judges noted is as much fun as it is assured means it's an enjoyable drive at any speed. The fuel use on test in a suburban focused testing environment was 5.8 litres per 100 kilometres. We've torn this segment apart every which way. We've looked at cabins, the way they drive, the standard feature list, the pricing, drive away pricing and list. And the winner is the Volkswagen Polo. Sure, hardly any surprise there, but plenty of manufacturers have tried. Some have come close, but this is still the best city car. You could formulate a case for all three of our finalists to take out the win in this segment, depending on what you honed in on specifically. But quite simply, the best all-rounder is the Volkswagen Polo. It delivers a premium driving experience that is also more sporting than the segment might otherwise indicate. Perhaps most importantly, it feels like it belongs in a segment above, such as the interior space and comfort behind the wheel. Crucially, if you are shopping in this segment either by design or necessity, the Polo won't leave you feeling like you've missed out on anything. The fact that it's so dialed in and as much fun to drive as it is, is a bonus.